My time's up. Thank Senator you, Chairman. Sass. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you both for being here. Mr. Horowitz, can you remind us who Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson are? Um, Ms. Mills was a uh, counselor at the State Department during Secretary Clinton's tenure, and Ms. Samuelson was also in her front office. And why do they show up in your report? Um, well, for several reasons. Um, on the one hand, uh, after they left the State Department and Secretary Clinton left the State Department, they culled through Secretary Clinton's emails to decide which ones they concluded were work-related and which ones weren't. And the ones they concluded were work-related were ultimately forwarded to the State Department. So they were involved in that process. In addition, they appear, as we describe here, at Secretary Clinton's interview on July 2nd, representing her as her lawyer. So they have professional relationships in the government, professional relationships outside the government, compensated as lawyers, personal relationships, and political relationships. And they're allowed to accompany Secretary Clinton to her interview. How can that be? Um, well, we describe in here what the rationale that was that was given to us as we lay out here. We think it was inconsistent with normal investigative procedure, and we're concerned about it. Were they ultimately involved in expunging evidence and information that was criminal? Um, they were ultimately involved in um, instructing individuals to remove, destroy the what they had concluded were non-work-related emails. I'll leave it to others to decide what that meant as a legal matter. So were they ever a target of investigation themselves, Ms. Mills or Ms. Samuelson? From our review here, what we were told was that the only individual considered for potential charging, a potential charging decision was Secretary Clinton. As we noted here, actually nobody was listed as a subject of this investigation at any point in time. Can you think of any other investigation that has no subject of the investigation? Um, I think you probably could have a circumstance. I'd leave it to Director Ray, although in this case where it was a focus, there was a focus of some idea of who was the individual or individuals that were involved in the events, that would be surprising. But again, I would defer to the Director. Director Ray, can you give me an example of any investigation like this uh, where people who are potentially involved in the destruction of criminal evidence would be allowed to accompany a supposed subject of an investigation, but not named target subject of an investigation. Any example anywhere like that? Uh, it's hard for me to come up with one. It's my experience, um, subjects don't usually accompany each other to interviews. I, I asked uh, Director Comey about this in a hearing in I think probably spring, summer of 2016 on the Homeland Security Committee, uh, and he said that when you're trying to get information out of a witness who maybe, or a, a subject, I don't remember the term, the noun he actually used, but when you're trying to get information and you're trying to compel them and it may take a long time if you have to subpoena them, uh, you would do things like this. Can you think of any examples like that? Well, again, I've already uh, testified to my experience. I'm reluctant ever to speak in terms of something never, ever happening, uh, because in my experience, there are very few absolutes in this world. Uh, but certainly the norm would be what I described. It's truly bizarre. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, can you tell us about President Obama's comments on the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails uh, in the spring and summer of 2016? Yeah, there were several occasions when either President Obama or his press secretary made comments about the Clinton uh, email investigation. And as we describe here, that raised concerns by the both the investigative team and the attorney general um, and the prosecutors. Um, and as we also describe here, it's one of the reasons cited to us by Director Comey uh, for his belief that he had to, in essence, go it alone and make the announcement he had to make on, that he made on July 5. I think many of us on both sides of the aisle are concerned about the erosion of norms about Article II officials uh, commenting on ongoing investigations. Um, I think it's a terrible thing in 2017 and 2018. I think it was a terrible thing in 2016. Um, can you tell us a little bit inside the culture of the Department of Justice? Was there a sense that the President of the United States commenting on an ongoing investigation was a problem? Did the Attorney General's office know that this was a problem? Um, it was a concern. We describe in here in detail what the reaction was, which was surprise and concern. And in fact, the Attorney General and the Justice Department reached out to the White House to find out how did this occur, why did it occur, and that it couldn't continue to occur. 
And that's General Lynch, I assume, at that that's time. That's correct. And so General Lynch then would seemingly be a person who wants to guard the integrity of these norms, and yet she's meeting with the former president of the United States, the husband of someone being investigated, even if not named as a subject, and once she had crossed this line of having sat on the tarmac with President Clinton, what steps did she then take? So at that point, she um, went to the department uh, ethics officer for a ethics opinion whether it required her to recuse, which as you know is one step, but there is two parts. There is the mandatory recusal and the laws are very, uh, I'll call narrow as to that. Um, there's also the permissive recusal provisions, but she went and got an opinion as to um, whether she was required to recuse. Um, she decided that she would not recuse um, on the permissive basis. Um, and then publicly announced on July 1st what her role would be going forward. And as we describe here, um, we found it um, confusing and unclear what she was telling the public her role would ultimately be because on the one hand, she was saying that she, um, following her normal practice, would hear the recommendations and fully intended to accept the recommendation. On the other hand, was saying she would accept the recommendation. So. Not clear what that meant, um, since there are potential conflicts between those two. Not clear to the bureau, not clear to the prosecutors the who are supposed to be making these decisions, and not clear to the public and to the press. Correct. Uh, shifting gears, I only have a little bit of time left. Uh, Director Ray, you've said you're going to institute new training about leaks inside the bureau. Uh, kudos, thank you. It's clearly necessary. Can you give the layman summary on what? individual FBI officials and FBI agents are allowed to talk to the press about? When and why? It's hard to put it all in one thumbnail. Um, certainly there are things like got to stick within the charging documents as we talked about before. Um, wouldn't talk about ongoing investigations publicly. Um, but I think there are situations where we would talk about, you know, an arrest that's been made, for example. Uh, you often see an SAC in a field office do a press conference uh, together with partners announcing an arrest. Uh, you know, so those are some of the kinds of situations. But, it, um, but the reason we've had a very specific, very detailed policy is to make sure that everybody understands what those rules are. And one of the things that's clear to me is that now having put the new policy in place, uh, we need to pound home the importance of following that policy. I want to be in a situation where everybody in our organization understands exactly what the rules are so that A, the 99.9% .9 of them that follow and follow them, and B, the remaining percent, uh, it's very easy to pursue an appropriate investigation and discipline if that's what's warranted. The, the chairman's going to gavel me out, so let me just say, um, Director Ray, we're glad you're there. Uh, your agency is incredibly important uh, to the American people, and there's been a massive breach of public trust, and it needs to be restored, and I think there are a lot of people pulling for you and your calling. Senator, you, Senator. Uh, 